Thanks for sticking with us. I'm Tim Lampley, and I'm here with Philip Hitchcock from PhD Gallery. We're talking about their current, or its current, your current exhibit called Selfie STL. It's an amazing ex exhibit because now it combines uh, our selfie pictures with an art form. Um, what's interesting about this is that um, you didn't really have any restrictions when it came to what right, kind of right. selfie One of the people were, were I, I put out in. in the invitation was there will be no restrictions on uh, duck face, <laughs> nudity, or good taste in general. Okay. So just keep in mind that when you submit these that they'll be on public view. And I think for the How most part... How many of those did you actually get? The duck face and the nudity? <laughs> I, I, well, n no complete nudity, um, some partial, but uh, you know, I, don't, I don't want to make this all salacious and everything. But I mean, that's, that's part of what a selfie's about, is you know, people monitoring body progress or whatever. Well, the first question I ask you is really, what does it say about us? Because um, you saw the picture where uh, someone is sitting or someone is standing or they're, they're in a, um, a good mood, as it appears, or they're not, or they're sad. Um, taking a selfie, depending upon when and where and, and what mood someone is in, could, could tell a real story, don't you think? It does. I, I think we tend not to publicize our worst moments. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, there's a, a psychological study now about Facebook-induced depression because people say, my life doesn't measure up to all of these wonderful, great moment shots that I'm seeing with all my friends. So um, I think that you have to kind of keep that in mind that maybe when somebody posts a selfie, they've taken five or six, they've picked the best one, they may have edited it within their phone or on their uh, laptop, and then they put it out for the world to see. So I mean, I, th I think you almost need to assume this is someone putting his or her best foot forward into the world and saying, hey, what do you think? Now this is different, and, and I understand that you do a lot of different things mm -hmm. with the exhibits uh, how do you choose which exhibits you book over at your uh, gallery? Well, I think one of the things that probably distinguishes me, uh, distinguishes me a little bit from some of the other galleries around town is um, I'm either fearless or reckless, depending <laughs> on how you try to, or maybe a little of both, but I'm, I'm willing to take a lot more risks, I think, uh, with the programming that I do there. So um, You're an artist yourself, right? I am. I do life-size figurative works. Okay. So... And what kind of exhibits have you chosen besides this? Well, I've done um, uh, shows with uh, ceramics, different shows with painting. We had a show uh, recently by Joe Jasper Dean called Drunk on Color, which was very vibrant uh, palette choices. I've also done um, uh, the first ever exhibit in St. Louis of original Tom of Finland drawings which uh, are works that are erotic in nature, mm -hmm. but yet they're collected by museums worldwide. And I think um, it's very risky for most visual arts venues to try and do a show like that because they might alienate certain people. Are you afraid about that? Are you afraid of alienating uh, certain parts of the community? No. Have you done that before? Alienated people? Yes. Oh, I'm sure I have. Yeah. With some of the exhibits? Yeah, it tells me I'm doing something right. <laughs> is that what an artist is supposed to do? Well, I think it was John Kennedy who said we have, to be, we have to be willing to set the artist free to follow his vision wherever it leads him. And I think he was referring to funding for the arts when he made that statement. And I, I would have to agree with that, that uh, while I may not agree with some of um, what is called art today, I think that you uh, need to release an artist to follow his own vision. Do you watch and, and pay attention to what people say when they come to the exhibit just to see what their reaction is? Well, what's been interesting about this show in particular is we have people taking selfies of themselves with their selfie. And uh, one of the things that I have, you know, everything is in an eight and a half by That's 11 format. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for one area, I have um, a mirror mm -hmm. for you to take your selfie here, just in the mirror like that. And then I'm posting them on the website and on Facebook. And uh, of course, you know, there was the other, the blank profile for all the people who declined to, oh. to uh, participate. So that was kind of interesting as well. And um, you know what, and I was going to ask you about that. We're running out of time here, so we need to give them some information on how to see this selfie exhibit. Sure. Uh, PhD Gallery is located at 2300 Cherokee Street. That's right in the heart of Antique Row here in St. Louis, one block east of Jefferson on the corner of Indiana and Cherokee. The gallery hours are noon to four, Thursday through Sunday, and the show runs through July 19th. 
And as, uh, thank you, Philip. I do appreciate you coming and giving us that good information about that. And it sounds like a great exhibit. So we'll, we'll be looking out for it. And hopefully a lot of people out there will go out and see it. So for more information about the Selfie STL uh, or on uh, PhD at PhD Gallery, visit phdstl.com and also make sure you stop by the gallery to see the exhibit, which is showing now at 2300 Cherokee Street until July 19th. After the break, get things cooking with our next guest from Slow Food St. Louis. Don't move, we'll be right back. <music>